Greetings everyone. Today we're going to discuss the second question asked by the code forces in its latest uh, rated contest 845th. So let's just look at the contest uh, question with question B. Okay. So it's basically given that you have uh, they will provide you a number an integer n and you have to create the permutation of it and and it's it will be such that you will merge these two permutation and find the number of inversion in the new array okay uh, uh, let's just look at the question for sake of simplicity right so it's given uh, a permutation of length n in an array consists of n distinct integer so it's given that it's a little distinct integer from 1 to n in an arbitrary order so it's not shorted or something like that okay and uh, it's give it's telling here what's the permutation or what's not uh, because uh, you can look if you want but i will i want to skip those things okay so uh, given a permutation p of length n we create an uh, array a consisting of two n element which will be equal to the p concatenated with the reverse uh, and we define the beauty of the beauty as a number of inversion in it okay so okay so it's stating what's the inversion and what's not so basically it's what it is telling that if there is a number and if there is any another number in the right side of it and it is smaller than it then it will consider that as an inversion okay nothing fancy it's all just fancy words used here and nothing hard okay so yeah uh let's just uh, and yeah we have to return the answer in form of 10 to the in uh, answer in form of modulo operator in modulo after applying the modulo operation right and uh, what we have to return we have to return the number of uh, inversions in it basically yeah uh, am i right yes am i am so we have to just return the number of inversion in the in the array possible okay let's just look the sample test cases for better understanding okay so it's given that for n is equal to 1 there is only one possible permutation or the one possible array which we can construct and so there is zero inversion so answer is equal to zero for n is equal to 2 we can construct the two array 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 and if we take the mirror image of the elements present in this element and concatenate it we will get this array and if we do similar operation on this array then we will to get that this array and in these two arrays the number of inversions are 2 let us look how it is yeah so let me bring you to whiteboard for the better understanding right. let's just look for n is equal to 2 so what we can see i have just written the you know test cases for saving that some time so for n is equal to 2 we know there is only two possible permutation of array possible right it's what we have learned in the elementary schools like it uh, it will be the one uh, n factorial so two possible combinations will be possible it's either 1 comma 2 or 2 comma 1 and what it is given then we will make a new array a which will be uh, which will contain the elements of the permutated array and the concatenation of the mirror image of those things right so basically we have to reverse this thing and concatenate in the back of it right so basically the new array will look at something like 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 and similarly if we make this array or this permutation so our new a will be something look like this okay so let's just try to find the number of inversion in first case okay so we will start from uh, uh, one so let me mark the indexing zero one two three okay so for zeroth indexing the number of inversions are i guess zero so i am gonna store the keep the recorder number of inversion on right side okay for two i guess number of inversions are uh, one only right for this two well, uh, two at indexing two the number of inversion is one only and for in i is indexing at uh, element at three the number of inversion is zero so i guess the answer is two for this array uh, this permutation of the uh, permutation right now let us look quickly for the another permutation uh, number of inversion from for i is equal to zero in second permutation is uh, i guess 2 am i right yes i am for 1 uh, it's 0 because none of the element in it's right and smaller than it for again 1 at indexing 2 uh, i don't think there's any element which is right side of it and uh, smaller than it and for 2 it's the uh, same case there's a no number okay so uh, what will be the case uh, for the rest of the 0 and it will 2 so we are noticing a pattern sort of pattern that uh, 
each array each array of uh, that particular basically each permutation will re return the same uh, value for that particular number right for n is equal to 2 the, all the possible permutations are returning the same numbers of uh, uh, inversion it's a uh, but we need more surety right so let's just look for the another test case right for n is equal to 3 and yeah as i mentioned that we have to return the answer in form of uh, 10 to the power 9 plus 7. We will look at uh, in for this in the future. Okay, for this, uh, let me draw a line for keeping the record. Selecting a pen. Yeah, for one, it will be zero obviously because no one no, none of the element exists which is smaller than zero. For two, uh, how many elements will be there? Uh, the one only, right? Okay. For three, I guess two elements are there. These two elements and these two will cause the inversion because they are on right side and smaller than it. So two. And for this 3, the same case will be 2. For this 2, the on the right side, the 1 is there and it is smaller than it. So, 1. So, it's uh, 4 uh, plus 2, 6. Right. So, let's just look for this. The number of inversion will be for 0 for 1 because none of the element, as I repeated, I, I have mentioned. Okay. For 3, uh, I guess the minimum 2 will be there. So, I guess this 2, this 2 and this 1 is in right side and smaller than it. So, it will be 3. Plus now for this two, it will be uh, this one only, okay, because it is only one which is a right side and smaller than it. So one for this two, uh, I guess this uh, one is only the possible answer. Uh, so one and uh, for this three, I guess this one is also uh, only another, uh, another answer, okay. So what it will be? It will be six. So as I have uh, as I have discussed that the each permutation of that uh, uh, number or each permutation uh, of an array belonging to that particular number like for permutation of array of uh, n is equal to 3 are generating the same result which is equal to 6 right uh, let's just quickly try for another test case and if it, it is it if will give also 6 then we'll be sure uh, that each will be result, returning the same number of uh, value right for 3 it will be something like 2 uh, I guess I have written something wrong. Yes, for two, one, and uh, it will be four, right? This one, this one, this one, and this one. For one, no one will be there. For two, the one will be there. For this two, uh, for this two, uh, this one is there. And for for this one, no one is here. And for this three, no one is here. So it will be six. So yeah. Now we are sure that the each uh, permutation are returning the same value. Like here it is for n is equal to 3, it's generating 6. And for n is equal to 2, it was generating what? 2, right? So what will be the total number of, uh, you know, uh, total number of uh, uh, things which we are searching in the complete permutation of uh, arrays for n is equal to 3? Okay, so it will be what? You know, the total number of arrangement, let me see. Okay, so we know the total number of arrangement will be something, uh, you know, uh, 3 factorial. Okay, sorry. It will be 3 factorial and and each array gen will generate the 6 uh, inversions, right? So, this much will be the total number of inversion for n is equal to 3. And for n is equal to 2, we have just observed that uh, each uh, permutation is generating what? 2. And we know the total number of permutations. The total number of permutation is 2 factorial. So we are getting a pattern, some sort of pattern that the n factorial is here. And how we can create the 2 and 3? Uh, something like, so what of pattern uh, we can generate? I am thinking of pattern something like this. Okay. I am thinking of pattern something like this that n factorial and n into n minus 1 because uh, if n is equal to 3 then 3 factorial into 3 into 2 6 it's uh, satisfying and for n is equal to 2 then it's 2 factorial 2 into 2 minus 1 so it's also fact satisfying i don't know let's just you know look for uh, n is equal to 4 and if it is getting the same then we will conclude that uh, this our uh, observation is correct so just quickly look for n is equal to 4 i will not draw all the cases we will look only one case only because we only already have understood so for uh 
for n is equal to 4 it should be what uh, 4 3 is a 12 right because 4 factorial into 4 into 4 3 so each one should generate the 12 so let us look uh, 1 will generate the 0 2 will generate what minimum of 1 right uh, 3 will generate what 2 uh, 4 will generate the 3 right 4 will generate this 4 will form the parity with these 3 now this 4 will also form the parity with this 3 this 3 will form the parity with these 2's this 2 will form the parity with this one and uh, if we add them all it will be 10 plus 2 12 yeah so uh, it also giving a 12 and uh, as our formula or our observation is also mentioning a 12 so it means what our formula is correct so now what rest we have to do we have to do this nothing so what will be our final answer for final so we reach to the conclusion our what our conclusion is our conclusion is that the answer will be n factorial into n into n minus 1 okay so what work does left the only work left is to calculate the n factorial right so the numerous way to calculate the n factorial but according to question i will prefer to calculate the n factorial by using some pre-processing right uh, we can calculate the n factorial by just using a pre-processing and use the you know sort of recursive approach that factorial of i is equal to factorial of i minus 1 into i right uh, this is very very basic factorial uh, program you can search on google or something like if, if you don't know how to calculate a factorial or you can use the inbuilt function if you want uh, if there is any available so let me uh, take you the code so a better understanding right uh, because nothing left in this question we have discussed we have observed the pattern so now let us let's see code I guess my PC is slow just to wait for a couple of seconds yeah it's here so yeah cool so yeah let me explain you code so as I mentioned few things uh, earlier that we have to calculate we have to do the pre-processing of factorial right because every time if we calculate a factorial then it will increase the complexity and it's not feasible uh, okay according to this question so what I have as I mentioned that uh, um, I will uh, calculate a factorial by using a DP solution or a simple factorial program which we use okay so that uh, I have made this function here okay and I am storing the factorial in this result uh, array or vector whatever you uh, prefer to use uh, the factorial of 0 is 0 and the rest of the just I have mentioned that factorial of i is equal to factorial of i minus 1 into i it's just a basic factorial program you can google it okay I will not mention it and describe it okay so I have just taken the input n okay here I have taken the input n and uh, as I have mentioned that our answer for any uh, n is answer what is our answer answer is n factorial into n into n minus 1 as we had observed the pattern and as we have discussed yes just few minutes before so our i have stored the n factorial initially in our answer okay it just result as i have mentioned that the i am storing the factorial in the result array here so basically it's just a fact n factorial okay factorial of n okay now I am multiplying it with n and multiplying it with n minus 1. If you have any doubt that why I am doing this uh, separately because I don't want anything something like uh, integer overflow or like that. So I have just uh, multiplied it separately and take the modulo operator. Okay. So yeah, it was pretty much uh, end of the solution and discussion. Once you look the solution and understand, observe the pattern, there is nothing left in this question and it's just simple multiplication and factorial program. The main key crux of this question was to observe that the each uh, permutation will re return the same number of inversions uh, for the respective n right and uh, then rest of the question will be very much simple i hope you understand this question if you not uh, then i highly suggest you to do a dry run first uh, draw the uh, permutations from your side and even if you don't understand those things then feel free to ask in comment section and chat groups okay and have a very uh, wonderful coding journey okay thank you